Hey everybody, how you doing? This is Oliver Joyce from Whiskey Barrel Studios coming to you from the end of winter here in Australia. It's been a long winter here and uh, I'm wearing a t-shirt. It's, it feels balmy. It's kind of scary for the future of uh, spring and summer is going to be hot. It's been a little while since the last update and over the last sort of uh, definitely the last solid month or so since Gorgon Shield was released, I've been working hard on Lair of the Leviathan. So if you checked out the last video, uh, you may know that me and uh, David from Nostalgic Realms have teamed up to build what I believe to be the ultimate retro role-playing game. If you're a fan of, you know, the old gold box role-playing games like Curse of the Azure Bonds and Pools of Darkness, uh, Champions of Crin and stuff like that, if you liked games like Knights of Legend or Darklands, this is for you. If you like Baldur's Gate, this is also for you. It's, I like to think of this game as almost like a lo-fi version of Baldur's Gate. It's just a classic D&D adventure. And I'm so excited to show you what I've been working on. Over the last four weeks or so, I've built um, you know, title screen and settings, menus and credits and so on. But what I wanted to show you today is the world editor. So without further ado, let's jump in. and I'll show you the progress I've made over the last month or so. All right, so what you can see here is the uh, the beautiful overland map that David has done. Um, fantastic job. I'm actually going to show you this map in detail in uh, maybe either later this video or in a future video. But what I wanted to show you, in fact, is the map editor. So I pressed edit here. And we go into the uh, the basically the, the world editor, not just the map, the whole world. So, you know, I can scroll this map left and right. Got different tabs for you know characters, locations, quests, items, powers, dialogues. They're not built yet. Uh, they're coming up. But uh, the map editor itself, you can load these maps in off the disk. You can name them. You can call it the Valley, the Valley of Doom, whatever it is you want to call it. Um, what I want to show you is this map is actually made up of tiles here. So the map itself is a beautiful Photoshop piece of artwork, actually done in A Sprite, I believe. Um, but it has over the top these various tiles, and they each represent a different terrain region. And if I show you the map legend here, you can see that um, FS represents for forest shallow, forest deep, you know, thicker, deeper forest, R for roads, uh, VI for village, that kind of thing, um, M for mountains, I for impassable, you know, E for edge of the map and that kind of thing. And you can kind of see how I've overlaid those by changing the opacity here. Look at the road there. You can see it follows those terrain paths there. And what that means is as the players walk over the map, they'll um, move faster and slower depending on, you know, if they're on the road, they move faster. If in the forest, they move a little slower. Um, and you know, if they're in the river, they'll sort of they'll sink down into the water and that kind of thing. Um, and basically, this impacts the whole game because if you're in the forest, you'll encounter forest monsters, you know, but you can forage for food. If you're in the mountains, you need mountain climbing gear and that kind of stuff like that. So just real sort of adventure sort of stuff. We also have a uh, time of day editor. So you can actually set how fast the time elapses, which, you know, that's not going to affect anything right now because it's paused. But if I was to speed that up and then go back to the main game, you see the time of day shifting very fast. And I can also set how fast the party moves, um, the light color that a, the party emits, you know, everything from, you know, you can have a green light if they wanted, if they were suffering from illness or whatever, um, and how much energy and the time of day itself you can set here. So if I say set it to one that will be you know one in the morning now you can see that party light it you can set it brighter to dimmer or the range that they cast so if they had like a you know a magic lantern or something that cast this blue light you could do that kind of cool um and the range of that as well but you know the default one is kind of this this nice color here so more on that though is actually the lights itself i've created this light editor for every town and you can see that all the numbers and the lights, if I click on a light here, I can see that this is a, a light for a house. Um, and I can say this is a village light or a house light or a city, which is a brighter light. Notice the village light to the city light, the brightness is different. You can say this is a, uh, you know, a good place, like a, you know, a shrine or something or an evil place, and it glows red. 
Um, you can change the light energy for that, the range of the light, make it this, you know, really bad well can i can move it around too which is really nice uh and this is all done uh inside goto and as i create these lights it actually creates it to the scene and when i save it which i'm not because i'm mucking around with it it saves it as a resource and um it saves all the nodes and all the data um just using export variables and so on which is really powerful you know i can move these lights anywhere um i can delete a light if i want destroy the light what i can also do is I can say this light only ever comes on um, at you know 10 p.m. and it, then it stops at 1 a.m. or something like that. So it might be like late at night uh, at the lighthouse on the edge of the world, uh, just for two hours the light comes on and then you can go into that building, that kind of thing. Um, and we can set that to a custom color as well, you know, just like the other one, a weird green poison light that's you know maybe a tiny little down here, maybe there was like. Something weird going like a little goblin camp where they're <laughs> brewing something nasty. Um, the weather, I can also set for each world, uh, each region map in the world, I can set the average temperature uh, to, you know, 60 degrees is 60 degrees is really hot. It's 100 and something Fahrenheit. 30 degrees is, you know, it's pretty warm as well. Chance of rain, chance of snow, chance of dust storms. And that will affect and impact how the... Um, you know, each terrain feels to go. So if you went to another region where there's heaps of rain, chances are you're going to get thunderstorms and that will impact combat and all that kind of stuff as well. So uh, these are all sort of background details that make the world much more vibrant. And for every map, I'll be able to set that. Um, so going back, changing the time of day back to a, you know, middle of the day. The next thing I wanted to show you is the points of interest. And I can create a new point of interest here. Um, there's one to see here. Actually, this is the one on that main castle area. You see these two circles, right? Um, and I can change this from a location or a conversation where like when you move over a um, certain part of the map, one of the party members might say, um, a dwarf might say, I don't like being in the forest. There's too many elves. Because all dwarves are obviously, you know, Scottish kind of thing. Or an encounter might be like this little exclamation point somewhere. Battle. Difficulty check, like, you know, if you want to try and cross the river, it might be say, hey, there's a fast flowing stream here. Roll for your difficulty and it might check to see your swimming skill, whatever. Um, these two circles I wanted to show you. The outer circle represents where this icon becomes visible. Uh, when the party is outside of that radius, as they are now, that will be invisible. When they're inside the radius, it'll appear and then you'll be able to activate it. And inside that, there's this trigger circle. And then, you know, that can be bigger than that, but I'm going to make it force it so it can't be actually. When they actually get inside that trigger radius, then that event will actually happen. So for most events, it's going to be, you know, pretty much on the icon. But for some things, you might say when it gets within range of that, so maybe like there's a volcano or something, uh, when it gets to any point of that volcano, it triggers the event. When you're within that visibility radius, so these are really cool, and I can do these all visually. And David, I can give this um, editor to David, and he can um, edit it as well. You can show the icon on the map or not um, for like conversations. You know, that obviously you get it to this point where it'll trigger a conversation, and it's going to you know show it or it's not going to show it. Uh, and I think that's really cool. There are other tabs that don't do anything yet, um, which uh, they'll come. But that is the main thing I have for you today. Now, this world editor is really powerful because it allows us to visually create uh, and set up our world the way we want to and edit it very quickly as well. And means means we can create events and um, battles and encounters, uh, you know, just as much as we want rather than having to code everything up manually and then having to tediously edit it. Uh, the next thing I work on after the character creator, which is coming up, will be a sort of uh, a place, a point of interest editor. So it'll be like um, when the party reaches this point, um, there is a you know little slider bar will come up, 30% chance of this encounter happening. And then it says, okay, um, the party will, if there's a dwarf in the party, the dwarf will say this line of text, then wait two seconds and then show a battle against you know, two cobalts and I'll be able to sort of, you know, drag each, you know, event into a series of sub events and make these long quest chains and so on, all visually without me having to type. And this is something I've, you know, it's more ambitious than things that I've worked on in the past. And uh, the power of Godot is that I can just do this all 
save it and it saved it to the engine which is really powerful and it's all saving it by code and resources and so on like that um so i'm just i'm i'm super impressed so if you're working um as a game dev and you're listening to this video uh Godo is especially Godo 4 is getting really powerful i'm working on the bleeding edge in Godo 4.4 <laughs> uh, which is you know uh the reason i'm doing that is because this game is not coming out for some years so i'm just gonna can happily work on the latest features and it's just getting more and more powerful and being able to do all these things and having these custom sliders and drop down lists and things like that and being able to save the whole node and all its sub nodes as resources is just fantastically powerful. So one more thing I wanted to show you uh, for this video is let's walk around the map for a bit. All right, so we're in the settings menu, of course, you know, you get your graphics options, you can change the font, font size, if you're blind, screen shake, you know you can have a high vis cursor um you can have the cool crt shaders all that sort of stuff um of course turn the music up or down sound volume all that sort of thing ambient sounds make them loud turn off the bird sound if you want game options zoom the overworld in and out like that you can see in the background and controls not yet but i'm hoping to be able to support um it already supports keyboard, but hopefully be able to support gamepad for, you know, we want to get this game on the Nintendo Switch as well. So if I go done now, let's show you walking around the map. Here's our little party and they, they bop around. I can zoom in with a mouse wheel if I want to. And see that. There's a little bit of a gray border there, which I got to clean up. It's not supposed to happen. Ah, it's raining. You can see up here, 13 degrees light rain. So there's a full weather system. If you know me, you know I like putting weather systems in games. Uh, you see that little door icon? That's because we're in the visibility circle. And as we walk away, that goes away. Every time you move, the time doesn't move until you move. So it's 2 p.m. Every time we move, we move fast on the roads, slower in the forest, and there's a little dither filter on the characters. So you notice they're almost invisible. Now it's getting late, 5 p.m. The sun starts to fade. Then you get this little um, dusk sort of god rays, and then a... Um, sort of a bell chimes and our light goes on you remember the light we we're creating the in the uh, map editor that's this light here so we're walking around at 6 7 p.m we can walk into this town and past there i can even walk into the river as well if you want so notice we're in the river you can walk when they go up they go through the river down and then out which is kind of cool it's sort of they sink down into it you can walk through the river Two in the morning walking in a river. Very, very cold. You know, bats and birds fly across and everything. Now dawn, 5 a.m. Clouds are coming across. There's all sorts of different weather patterns as well. You know, you have overcast and storms. We can walk. We're going to follow the roads because it's faster. Find a way to, um, you know, there's a little village here. There's a swamp. When you go into the swamp, they sink down as well like the Swamp of Sorrow and the Never Ending Story. I'm going to be adding little bubble particles and stuff like that as well. And you can zoom in again on that if you want. See them moving around. And it's uh, dusk now again. And you know, if I wanted to, I could go into the editor and go time elapsed speed to really fast. You know, move the party faster as well. And... Let's go see if I can do that without it saving. See how fast things go. So, oh yeah, now I, the hours move quickly. So it's dawn, raining. Now, of course, I wouldn't want to do that because that's, you know, dusk. And then it's dawn and they're moving super fast. But, you know, when you get horses and things, you will move faster. Then it's dawn, then it's dusk. But we're going to go back to um, <laughs> put the time of day back to... No, not the time of day, the time elapsed speed back to what it was or whatever. So yeah, this is all done in a really visual way. He's still moving super fast, but yeah. Um, seasons change, you get heat waves, all this sort of stuff. And it's pretty exciting. So that represents around about a month 
of full-time development on this. I did maybe a week and a bit before this, but what I was, you know, trying to get Gorgon Shield launched as well, uh, which, you know, literally came out just about a month ago. So since then, um, this is what I've been working on. And you can see how quickly sort of progress is being made. And at David's end, he's been doing some crazy art that you haven't seen yet for characters and monsters and world settings and everything. And you're gonna be really impressed by that. Uh, we'll have more to show you, you know, in another month or so. I'm not doing these videos that often, just when I've got something that I really want to show off. Um, you should go and wish list where, Lair of the Leviathan. I think you're going to love it. This is the Steam page, of course, for Lair of the Leviathan. And this, you know, what you see in this trailer video is, is basically what David has put together in a different engine called Construct. And I'm rebuilding the whole thing in, you know, Godot because there's, you know, lots more fancy effects and things. But fantastic turn-based battles um you can go into the towns and so on that overworld map will then zoom into the towns um we're going to use hex squids for battles that's that map you can see but i've obviously done more on that since then it's going to be fantastic uh we've already got lots of wish lists as well we're looking at you know already more than seventeen thousand wish lists so this is this is going to be big i think this you know you if you're going to see more and more of Lair Leviathan in the, in the years ahead. I think, you know, I'm so honored to be part of this project. And I think this could be every bit as big as Sword and Sandals, if not a lot bigger. And so, you know, what what a great privilege. And, and this is, I think this is the most exciting project I've ever worked on. It's it's basically as close to my dream game as uh, you can get. And, and to be working with David, you know, absolute great guy and, um, you know, we're very much on the same page as to the kind of game we want and the kind of game we don't want to make as well. You know, we're very clear on that. So there you have it, Lair of Leviathan, the world editor. Um, just quickly, I just want to give a bit of a shout out to my Patreon supporters. Cavity number one, Dane Simono, Brandon K, Noah Gudajan, X Up Omega, Jeffro of Hex 3D, Hopeless, Louis Fugel, Valenwed, and Martin Chalupski. You guys have been with me for a long time. I give you... Um, special newsletters where you guys knew all about this world editor before everyone else and um i want to thank you for being with me along the way and hopefully i can involve you guys somehow in lair of leviathan whether you get your own you know little portrait on the wall or a tombstone or some kind of a book that you know some whatever it is but you'll be part of it you'll be immortalized forever in the game and if you want to be a patron, there's a link below and it helps me and um, helps the development of this game in the years ahead because you know this is going to be a long project and uh Got my hands, you know, very much full with it. Very much. So, a um, lot going on. So, that's it for today. I don't know why it keeps popping up. You know who I am. Get away. Get away. Get away. Um, you know who I am. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks so much for being with me today. And uh, sorry for the long absence from YouTube. I've been, as you can see, working real hard on this. And I can't wait to show you more. Until next time, my friends. Bye for now.